welcome to Sculpture Studios. We've got a real treat for all you animal lovers out there, particularly those in favour of animal conservation. Contacted by Andy Downham and the project pastor Joe Kokoza from a company called Morocco, we've been commissioned to make a stylized gorilla from glass fibre. The design company Morocco have a unique selection of stylized pieces, such as their trademark Frank the Bulldog. In the same faceted polygon design as Frank, the concept model of Gus the Gorilla is now being brought into oversized 3D. We're going to be creating Gus around 3 metres tall in aid of promoting animal conservation for magnificent animals like gorillas, and this is in collaboration with the Aspinall Foundation charity. Alongside Gus will be a selection of other animals, but exhibited in a way that you wouldn't expect for public art. For now, no monkey business as we get started. We're working from a CAD model for the geometric Morocco design, and we're having Gus cut using a 5-axis route. We're providing a 3D cutting company with the material and the CAD files to have Gus made, and this is to ensure there is no deviation from the design, everything is perfectly smooth, flat, and a mirrored image symmetrically from left to right. The 5-axis cutting results in the body of the gorilla broken down into multiple, manageable size pieces. This makes them easier to handle, as well as allowing them to be transported in a smaller vehicle back to our studio. To get a sense of the sheer scale of the gorilla, we're temporarily piecing him together in the workshop, and this way we can send accurate measurements to the client. It's not every day we feel the need to make a piece of art feel welcome, but we want to let Gus know that we're all on the same side here, and really make him feel at home. The material at this stage is just a standard bead polystyrene, or a styrofoam for those out in the States. The only cleaning up required from us is any additional sanding on residual cut lines that we can still see in the foam before we prepare it for mould making. For the mould we're going to be keeping this broken down in sections, with the four legs, the body in two halves and the face section. Each area is going to require a numerous amount of pieces, and we're going to be keeping this symmetrical on each side so that all the seam lines are the same. Just talk me through what you and Samwise are doing here, Aidan. Yeah. First of all, we have the polystyrene shape itself, the whole form. Uh, we've divided it into sections, so you can actually break it down into manageable parts. We're sticking a knife down these individual cut lines, and we're sticking a shim on there, which is like a plastic shim, and that will just divide our walls up, so they're making sure that each mould can come off in a certain fashion. Uh, so there's probably about, about 25 bits for the whole gorilla, uh, but it's manageable. And over here, we've got the head area there alone. Uh, we've put a PVA glue on, which is a bit old fashioned, but that creates a bit of a skin. It's quite tough, but slightly, uh, it's got a, it's, it's, it's got a, a rubber membrane. This is in place of using our usual sticky back tin foil, which as good as it is uh, to cover the job, would probably leave a lot of lines and a lot of creases that we'd need to iron out later on in the fiberglass stage, which would obviously take a lot of time. And the PVA glue can go on quite quick, and it provides a skin rather than a, rather than a solid barrier that we'd need to clean up later. Yeah. And the idea is we're using a, it's a water-based plaster, and we're trying to clean up the surface and lose all that kind of polystyrene little dents all over it. And we can rub this back because it's air dry, which should take too long in this weather. And we can just clean it up the surface uh, is as we move along, so it should get better and better. Water-based plaster filler, which we get asked about a lot. You can buy it from in large tubs from home construction stores. It air dries so it because it's just water-based. Um, it's not particularly strong, but it's good for finishing a sculpture, just for aesthetics. Um, but don't use it to strengthen the sculpture at all. At this stage, it's just used for smoothening the poly down so that it's ready to take a mould. The PVA glue is built up in several layers, and we add a colour to each application so that we can see where we've already been. The numerous layers help smoothen out the texture of the poly even further, as well as ensuring that there's a solid barrier between the foam and the resin that's going on top and this saves the resin simply burning through. 
the water-based plaster filler is sanded down once it's had time to dry. And the main thing we're trying to do, as well as get rid of the texture, is make sure that all the edges are kept nice and crisp. Good weather always helps with projects like this, both with drying time and allowing us more space inside the workshop as we can work outside. Beginning the mould now, we've waxed the PVA blue and we're going over with a gel coat of resin. This is then backed up with multiple layers of fibreglass and a general purpose resin and it's built up in extra strength on the walls between the mould pieces. Though we're only planning to create one cast of gus at this stage, we need to ensure that the mould is of a good enough standard to create the cast as the polystyrene pattern will most likely be destroyed during the extraction so we won't have a chance to make another one. Once the resin is all set, it's a case of trimming off all the excess material from the edges and simply opening up the mould to pop the polystyrene out. Yeah, not always as easy an extraction as it sounds. For some of us it takes a bit of brute force, hot water and leverage to get the master patterns out, but for someone like Kevin, who's a bit of a wizard when it comes to working something out and calculations, he has a much better method. I'm not just using the word wizard loosely, I mean literally. Proceed to clean up the interior of all the mould pieces, filling any small holes and sanding down any rough patches. We repeat this process to lose any of the liquid lines from the glue and improve in the finish every step of the way. When everything's nice and neat on the inside, we use a PVA blue release agent to allow the resin to come out of the mould and we repeat the same process of gel coat resin backed up with glass fibre for the cast. <laughs> To bring all the segments together as one unit, each section of the mould needs to be joined and bolted together via the mould walls so the pieces can be laminated to each other from the inside. All the seam lines are then cleaned up on the outside and the surfaces are filled, sanded over and over again until we're happy with the finish. With a relatively complex shape like this, and especially something of this size that's going to be out in the public eye, we really want to make sure the end result is a really high quality product. Coming up, you'll see the process we went down to make sure that this is as good a finish as the client is hoping. On the side of the gorilla here, you can see the Morocco logo, and on their website, they use this image as part of an augmented reality app. This will play a big part in regards to the other animals exhibited alongside Gus later on. Thank you. 
whilst we're not going bananas about how much cleaning up's involved, we're looking forward to seeing Gus in one uniform colour. We go over with primer paints to see what we've got and see if he needs more work, and only when we're happy do we go over with the final artwork. The client's chosen a preliminary silver paint, which I guess will definitely make him a silver back, and we'll go on with a 2K car body paint for this that's suitable for outside use. Here we are with uh, Gus the Gorilla on his side. Got all his surface planes, nice and correct. Filled in all the little bumps and uh, crevices really from all the CNC. We've uh, added metal work. And in order to have these, because they're all different angles, we've created these little pieces here. Little templates, yeah, and they fit in uh, like, like wherever they go. And keeping all these dead square across the floor. And the idea is they come out far enough with a hole in here so we can get a screwdriver dead through and not back here somewhere. And it's a dead straight angle through the lot. Nice and strong. And we're going to create a, like a hammerite finish on the top of these. Now we think we've got it nice, but every time we look around it will see just a bit more and a bit more, but it can't go on forever. But we're going to get this out of the side now, give it a primer, and that'll give it an overall finish, and then we can just check all these angles again to make sure they're as the best that we can get them really. So looking good so far. Let's get Gus outside. Here we are, in the box. That's it. That's it. <laughs> With the crate being delivered, and the primer and top coat of paint set, we've invited Joe Kokoza down to the studio to take a look at Gus in his current state. This is the first time that Joe's had a chance to see Gus in the flesh, or the fiberglass in this case, and get a proper sense of how big he is. At this moment in time, we feel the finish of the Gorilla isn't quite as high as we'd like. Aidan's explained that the nature of the shiny silver paint picks up on the light and it emphasises any imperfections. The original idea of using a grey matte paint would not only flatten the look and the surface of the sculpture, but it would also be more in keeping with the original model that Joe's brought down to the workshop. Changing the paint is one thing, but we also want to physically improve the surface as well. The good thing about allowing appropriate time for a project and getting on and ahead of schedule is exactly for moments like this, where we have time to make amendments without pushing back the final deadline of the job itself. Joe's left it up to us to find the best solution with the time given, and here in the next clip you can see how the invested services of a car body specialist has improved the final artwork. Here we have the large crate, uh, which the Gorilla is going to be packed inside. Um, big enough, but only just about 100ml each side. The side of this comes off, and we can slide the Gorilla in very, very carefully and put pads on the inside so it is locked in nice and tight and then it's going to get high abbed up onto a lorry and then they're taken to its destination. And here we have the Gorilla in all its glory. Um, we had so much on in the workshop, we've changed it from uh, silver to grey and we sent it out to an outside spray company called uh, SH Body Works and they've done a lovely job so it was good to get it out of the workshop because there was so much dust and fiberglass and everything else um, it would have been possible to get a lovely finish, but they took it away and uh, they did us proud. So thank you very much indeed, Sam. That's appreciated. It would have taken a long time, what with the work on in the studio, um, to get this to the beautiful finish that it is now. But it's quite handy. They're just down the road from us. It's done a really nice job. Um, Sent it off, and a week later, it's come back looking looking really nice. And the matte finish um, we've sent to the client, and I think everyone agrees the matte finish is is a lot cleaner. I think it looks actually a lot more like their schematic drawings and the computer is a generated item. It's really, really nice and a lot more quality involved. So it's good. The silver was slightly kind of futuristic, but this is really 
it, it feels solid, which I think is one of the important things. It's what the gorilla is supposed to be, and uh, it's a, a beautiful finish all round. We'll get some finish shots, hopefully, of the gorilla. Gus sets up on location. Happy birthday, Gus. Happy birthday, Gus. He's been a nice addition to stand outside. A lot of people driving around. Everyone has a little cheeky peek. And uh, yeah, he's a really nice, really nice feature and, and, and a good size for the studio as well. He's been a brilliant project to work on. On to site now, and we're joining Gus in Finsbury Avenue Square in London. Commissioned by Broadgate in collaboration with the Aspinall Foundation, the wildlife area features the fully 3D Gus the Gorilla and Morocco's augmented reality exhibit. By downloading their personalised app, the public were able to see a variety of animals on their smartphones brought into 3D on the screen right in front of them. By aiming their camera at the corresponding exhibition boards, the app presented them with a moving 3D creation and details of the animal status in the wild. After featuring as part of the London Design Festival, Gus was then donated as a gift to the Aspinall Foundation. He now joins the real gorillas in one of Aspinall's wildlife parks and is happily situated down in Kent. We'd like to thank Joe Kokoza personally for getting this project moving after it changed hands at the beginning of the job and we really hope to work with him and Morocco in the future. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter and for more of our work visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.